Welcome to the report from Tiger Mountain, ladies and gentlemen. Today we're going to be talking about, yes, one of our favourite topics here, the report from Tiger Mountain, the globalists. And we're going to talk about them as understanding the globalists as an elite criminal class, a mega elite criminal class. So stick around. Report from Tiger Mountain. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, the globalist class, we're going to discuss them today on the report from Tiger Mountain. Now, um, I think, you know, I'm a firm believer in know they enemy. So uh, I'm going to be doing a series of videos here at Report from Tiger Mountain in the coming uh, months, I guess, uh, that's going to try and examine um, the situation with the globalists. And um, obviously, uh, you know, we should probably get into different who are the globalists. Um, they are a kind of, uh, they are a multi-ethnic, um, mega elite um, uh class of people all over the world that seem to promote the idea of one world government. That's probably the easiest way to sum up. Um, there've been many accusations that the, the word globalist represents one particular ethnic community. Now that's not necessarily true. Obviously certain ethnic communities uh, are overrepresented in end of the term globalist, but it truly is a multicultural um, uh, a, a group of activity in, in the sense that you have, you know, um, people from all over the world. You have, you know, Chinese billionaires and you have some Russian oligarchs and you have some, you know, UK, um, you know, aristocracy and, and extremely rich people from the UK and you have like Brussels Euro trash and you have, you know, elitists uh, from America and, you know, you, you have like Jewish billionaires like uh, Soros, uh, you know, but you have Richard Branson, you have pop stars like, you know, um, Bono. So it truly is a multi-ethnic uh, group of people, um, but they do seem... Um, now, of course, they also too, many of them are quite successful in life in the sense that, like, uh, they don't instantly come across as criminals. Um, they, uh, and some of them may not actually be um, directly involved in criminal activity. Someone like Bono, for example, I mean, he's just a successful rock musician. He's probably been involved in some tax um, avoidance over the years. He's quite famous for it in Ireland, actually, but I don't think he's uh, probably, you know, uh, trafficking, um, you know, human beings uh, directly. He might be a customer of such a service, but, um, you know, that's again speculation. So, the you know, the globalist criminal class, you know, and this is something that's important because you, you've got criminal conspiracy, the idea of criminal conspiracy. Say you look at, say, the Mexican cartels and there are whole um, police precincts, whole police stations that are dedicated to trying to fight um Mexican cartels, and they all understand it's conspiracy. So think about a Mexican cartel, and now think about a group of criminals that are like 10 times or even 20, 50 times above their pay grade than even the, the biggest Mexican cartel. And that's what you're dealing with with the globalists. You're dealing with a, a huge elite criminal network, and they've been portrayed in media. They've been portrayed in media constantly. I mean, great artists and great um, writers and great filmmakers have been trying to Tell us what's going on since World War II. Obviously, Spectre um, from the James Bond films obviously represents the um, the really uh, criminal and terrorist side of the globalists. Spectre, um, someone like Blofeld with his cat. I mean, that's, that is literally someone like George Soros. It's quite scary. And then you've got someone like even William Burroughs who talks about interzone and he deals with like the lower levels, all the things to do with drugs, activity and like hustlers, street level hustlers. They're all connected to the globalist conspiracy again. So, you know, he's dealt with it at a more macro level, you know, sorry, micro level, whereas um, someone like Ian Fleming deals with it at a macro level. And, you know, this has gone on and there's so many examples of this kind of, you know, I mean, even in something like uh, Get Smart, there's chaos, uh, you know, uh, chaos and control. The control of the good guys and chaos represents the globalists. We know what this is, ladies and gentlemen. You know, and it is a kind of mega elite criminal class and it normally exists above law and order. And that's what's scary about it. Um, obviously, every now and then uh, it does get its... Um, because it's involved in so much criminal activity, it gets its fi uh, fingers caught at a lower level of criminality that we can arrest the people that are involved in. Obviously, Jeffrey Epstein was a huge example of that. Obviously, he was a Mossad um, spy collecting uh, information um, to blackmail our politicians because that's how they work. You should be remembered. They, they, that's how they own all our politicians for this kind of sex blackmail uh, situation. Not all of them. Some of them they bribe. Some of them uh, might be just sympathetic to the globalist agenda, um, this Luciferian globalist agenda. So it's, it's quite terrifying. And uh, let's have a look here. There's like obviously Jeffrey Epstein, um, Nexium, um, and recently um, Nexium was controlled by the Bronfman family. Uh, and Claire Bronfman recently got sent to jail, I think, for about three or four years. That's one of the first times 
uh, one of these major globalists has been jailed. Um, so that's fantastic. And obviously the fact that's happened on Trump's watch because he's been going after these people. And that's because that's why he's so unpopular. And that's why the, the media, which is controlled by these very same people, have been fighting Trump uh, tooth and nail since day one. And then, of course, you know, there's a whole situation that surrounds Pizzagate. Um, you know, you've only got to look into um, the kind of art that John Podesta and his brother collects and the Instagram page of James Elefantis to know that there's a lot more going on in relation to Pizzagate. But Pizzagate itself has become a kind of metaphor, not just for those particular cases. I know people who like to say that Pizzagate is a, is a um, what's it called, um, you know, uh, it's been, you know, fact-checked and proven to be false, but it's become a kind of metaphor for this whole thing of Jeffrey Epstein and Nexium and, and also too, I mean, you should be remembered, there's been elite pedophile kind of scandals in, in the UK. I mean, are we going to deny Jimmy, Jimmy Savile, for God's sake, and like Ted Heath? I mean, you know, all these scandals that have happened in the UK, and there's been hundreds of them, uh, with elite uh, stuff. So this is all connected to a kind of Pizzagate globalist kind of network, and this is these things are all connected. And um, this is what the globalists are. And so to know that enemy, you need to understand this is how they work. And so that's what I wanted to talk about, to get you all thinking about that, to understand that the globalist elite is a kind of elite criminal class that often operates at a level above even our politicians, because they even control our politicians, whether it be through blackmail, or bribery, or you know the fact that our politicians buy into this idea of a new world order, of a, of a kind of globalised government as they see it as, I don't know, as the way forward for humanity, I don't know. So there's something terrifying going on, and um, people don't want us to talk about it, which is why we must. So we will hear on the report from Tiger Mountain. Thank you for listening.